All right, we're going to start the day with sort of a kind of a review to sort of ease our way into one and two-step equations. So here we go. If I asked you to solve this equation right here, it would say y plus 3 is equal to 10. Okay. y plus 3 is equal to 10. First of all, what is the variable? Someone tell me what's the variable here. Y. y. That is correct. Y is the variable. And what are you doing to the variable? What am I doing inside this blue box here? What am I doing to the variable? Adding I'm adding 3 to the variable. Does everyone agree we're adding 3 to the variable? Yep. So what's the inverse operation of adding 3? The inverse would be taking away 3 or subtracting 3. So I have y plus 3 minus 3 is equal to 10 minus 3. Now, hold on a second. Why did I have to do this to both sides of my equation? Why did I have to do that? Any thoughts on why I had to do it to both sides? How come I just can't do it to one side? Because we have a key vocab term, which means equivalent equations. We're allowed to add the same number to both sides or subtract the same number to both sides. But we have to do it to both sides to keep our equations sort of balanced. Okay, so let's figure out what does y plus 3 minus 3 equal? Yeah, this is y plus 0 is equal to 10 minus 3, which is 7. Now, y plus 0 is, of course, just y equals 7. Now, how do I know I did that correctly? What do I do? I can check. How do I check? Well, what do I do with the 7? Uh, that's close. That's close. What do I do with the 7? I do something with the 7. What is it? Yes, sir. I add 3 to each side? Yeah. Um, there's a word I'm looking for. What's the word I'm looking for? The word I'm looking for is starts with an S. Nope. Sub. Substitution, right? Take that Y, let's plug it right back in and see. Yeah. Is 7 plus 3 equal to 10? You guys tell me, yes or no? Is this a true statement or false? Sure. It's a statement. So therefore, I must have done it right. And if you think about it, it takes a number and I add 3 and I get 10. The number had to be 7 to begin with, okay? So right here, this is the process that we're trying to identify, all right? We're trying to identify the stuff in the middle. What are we doing? All right, let's have to do another one together. Let's call this one B. This was A, and this is B. What if I gave you T nine is equal to eleven? All right. What's the variable I'm working with here? T. You're correct. And what am I doing box here? What am I doing to my variable? I am subtracting nine. Very good. What is the inverse of subtracting nine? Adding nine. Yes, the inverse operation. So I'm going to have T. Minus 9 plus 9 is equal to 11 plus 9. Whatever I do to one side of my equation, I'm allowed to do to the other side of my equation as long as I keep it balanced. So on the left side, I get t, mm, I get plus 0 here, equals 20. So therefore, t equals to 20. And how do I check to write? What's the word I use? Substitute, yeah. Is 20 minus 9 equal to 11? Yes, 11 is 11. Check that. So that's what we want to do. We want to use this operation. Nice job, y'all, to get our answer, to get our variable by itself. So we did an uh, addition, a subtraction. Let's do one of each of the others. Here we go. Uh, second box. If I were to solve 8x is equal to 56. All right, you guys tell me, what is the variable in this case? The x, very good. And what am I doing to my variable? I am multiplying it by what number? Eight. By 8, very good. So what is the inverse of multiplying by 8? Dividing by 8, correct. So I need to divide both sides of my equation by 8. That gives me a factor of 1, because 8 divided by 8 is 1. That leaves me with x is equal to, what is 56 divided by 8? 7. 7, yes, very good. 7. So I think this is my answer, and I'm going to check. Let's see here. 8 times 7, 56. Yep, it sure is. 6 equals 56. I have a true statement, so I must have done it correctly.
Okay, here's part A. Here's part B for you. If I have x and I'm dividing by 5, and I set that equal to 12. Okay, first things first, let's identify the variable. What variable am I using? x, good. And what am I doing to my variable x? I am, say again louder. I'm dividing by what? By 5. What is the inverse of dividing by 5? Multiplying by 5. So if you just ask yourself, what is the inverse of the thing you're doing, you should figure out what the next step is. Now, 5 divided by 5 gives you 60. So that means it has to be 12 times 5 is, I think, 60. Is that right? Good. And let's work here. So I'm going to take x and plug it back in and substitute. Is 60 divided by 5 equal to 12? Does 12 equal 12? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can we carry on? Yeah, good? Okay, great. Okay, I'd like to challenge you for a you try right here. I'd like to challenge your thinking here. If I were to give you 3 fifths x equals 6, what would you do in this particular case? 3 fifths x equal to 6. What are we doing to our variable x? We're multiplying it by what? We're not multiplying it by x, no. What are we multiplying it by? No, 3 fifths. We're multiplying by 3 fifths. So what's the inverse of multiplying by 3 fifths? Dividing by 3 fifths, is that correct? So, all right, if we say that, we're going to divide by 3 fifths. So that cancels out, that cancels out. So that means I'm going to divide by 3 fifths. You with me so far? Yeah? So that means x is equal to 6 divided by 1 times 5 thirds. Who can tell me what we just do there and why? What did I just do there? I took the reciprocal. Yes, why did I take the reciprocal? Because I am dividing what? I'm dividing two fractions, right? I'm dividing 6 and I'm dividing 3 fifths. So that's like 6 over 1 right here. Multiply by its reciprocal of 5 over 3. So therefore, how we get x is equal to 6 times 5 is... 30, right? Divide by 3, which would give me, of course, 10. That was a challenge problem. I thought so. Not that so. It's kind of hard. All right. Here we go. Third idea here. Third box. So we're going to solve a two-step equation. So part A, let's do this one. How about, how about 3x plus is equal to 19? 3x plus 7 is equal to 19. So why is this a two-step equation? What are the two steps? Yes, sir, what do you think? I have to get rid of the 7 over here, good. And what else do I have to get rid of? And I have to get rid of the 3. Look, there are my two steps, correct? All right, good. What's the inverse of adding 7? Subtracting 7. How many of you like to work vertically on a problem? Does anybody like to work vertically? And here's what I mean by vertical. If I have 3x plus 7 equals 19, I could subtract 7 vertically. So looking vertically now? So that gives me 3x, 7 take away 7 is 0, is equal to 19 take away 7 is how much? 12. Very good. So now, what am I doing? What's the second step of my, of my process here? Divide by what, you guys? Yes, because I am multiplying by 3. So I'm going to divide by 3. So therefore, x is going to have to be how much? 4. Very good. And let's check our work. Is 3 times 4 plus 7 equal to 19? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, correct? Plus 7, yep, that equals 19. So I must have done it right. The process, ladies and gentlemen, the process is to use inverse 
Operation. And it looks like maybe you got that down. All right, can I do another one with you? Yeah, you guys are okay with that? Yeah. Right, so glad. Okay. Ooh, I kind of like this one right here. What if we have this? How about 4x plus 3x equals 63? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, 4x plus 3x. Anybody see anything interesting? Yes, sir. Great. He says combine like terms. Hold on a second. What are like terms? There's things that have to happen. They have to have the same variable. Nice job. Way to remember that. Same variable. Nice job. Else. Same what? Exponent. Yes. Nice job. So take a look at here. They have the same variable. X and X. Is that correct? So they have the same variable. What is the degree or what's the exponent here? Yes, one same exponent, which in this case happens to be a one. So if I have, have four x's here, and I have three x's there, and they are considered to be like terms, I can add them together. How many x's do I have total? Seven. seven, yes. Nice job. So I have seven x is equal to 63. That's my first step. Now, what am I doing to my variable? I am multiplying by how much? What's the inverse of multiplying by seven? Dividing by seven. You guys got it. So therefore, x, how much is that? Nine. nine. You are correct. All right, let's check. Is four times nine plus three times nine equal to 63? Four nines. How much is that? 36. Plus, how much are three nines? 27. Is that three? It sure does. Let's do this one. Let's solve. How about this? What if we have uh, 7x minus 14 equals 42? Okay, so we're doing two steps here. One of the steps is we're subtracting 14. The other step is we're multiplying by 7. So we need to do the inverse of these two operations here. So I'm going to choose to work vertically. So 7x minus 14 equals 42. What's the inverse of subtracting 14? Adding 14. Yes, very good. Okay, negative 14 plus 14 cancels to give me 7x is equal to, is this 56? Yeah, 56. Good. Now, I am multiplying x by 7. What's the multiplying by 7? Dividing by 7. Good. So divide by 7. So that means x has to be how much? Is that 8? There's only one person doing this? Yes. Andres? Andres says 8 is the answer. Okay, let's check. Let's see here. Is 7 times 8 minus 14 equal to 42? How much is 7 eighths? 56. Good. 56 minus 14, is that 42? It sure is. 42 is 42. All right. Last one. I want you to try it on your own. With my help, see if you can solve this one for me. How about this? How about 5B minus... Yeah, go ahead. What do we got? Combine like terms. And how do you know that those two are like terms? Same variables and exponents. Good. So what is 5B take away 2B? 3B is equal to 9. The inverse would be dividing by 3. Therefore, B is equal to 3. And if we checked, we'd get 5 times 3 minus 2 times 3 is 9. So 15 take away 6. Is that 9? 